Hello Year 12s, this is Mr. Lim here again and this is a video on the physical properties of alcohols, the last one in the alcohol series. Alright, so what are we going to be looking at? We're going to be looking at the physical properties of alcohols and in particular these um, points here, melting boiling point, solubility and vapor pressure. Alright, let's have a look. Alcohols. The alcohol groups add hydrogen bonding to the molecule. So hopefully if you remember hydrogen bonding, you need a H bonded to an NO or F, right? And you need an NO or F. If you have those two conditions, you can have a hydrogen bonding. All right. So the hydrogen bonding from the alcohol group can be shown in this diagram. Hey, look, let's go draw uh, two methanols. Okay, so one methanol here. Why have I drawn this in that particular shape? Because remember, this is a V shape around that central atom. Okay. And here's another methanol. Uh, here's another methanol with, uh, let's just do this O here and this hydrogen here. Okay. Where will be the hydrogen bonds be? Remember, these aren't hydrogen bonds, those are covalent bonds. These are hydrogen bonds, okay? The bonds between the hydrogen, which is bonded to a uh, very electronegative element, okay? So that's condition number one over here. That's that hydrogen, that's that hydrogen. It is not that hydrogen over there because that one's not bonded to a very electronegative element. And uh, between the N, O, or F, that's that one there, that's that one there. Okay, as long as you've got those two conditions, you're going to have hydrogen bonding. So, uh, alcohols then have a high melting and boiling point due to the hydrogen bonding within that alcohol group. Okay, so remember, melting and boiling point is dependent on the sum of intermolecular forces uh, of a molecule to another one of its molecules. All right, so it's the sum of intermolecular forces. Now, remember, all substances are going to have a couple, or especially these... Um, these uh, covalent molecular substances are going to have van der Waals forces. And what are the three van der Waals forces? Dispersion, dipole-dipole, dip, dip, and hydrogen bonding. Okay, so alcohols have all three. And because they have all three, their sum of, hydrogen, their sum of van der Waals forces is quite large. And remember, when you're talking about melting and boiling point, you have to talk about, when you're explaining something, the energy required to break slash separate uh, the atoms apart and that's not break the atoms apart it should be break the bonds break bonds between atoms and separate uh, the atoms apart so it's talking about the sum of intermolecular forces uh, gives an indication about how much energy is required and that's uh, represented by the temperature but you have to talk about the energy required all right so the hydrogen bonding combines the dispersion and dipole dipole forces to make the sum of intermolecular forces quite high and for the size of the molecule all right so um let's have a look here the more alcohols mean more hydrogen bonding uh, so if you have a diol it'll be slightly higher uh, boiling point than a single alcohol um, of similar molecular size. All right, so let's have a look here. So here we see that uh, as your size increases, your boiling point increases, all right? And that's due to the increased levels of what? Increased levels of dispersion forces because you simply have a larger substance, okay? But going this way, where you're turning into an alcohol, right? You've got that extra hydrogen bonding Oops, the extra H bonding. And that extra H bonding increases the sum of van der Waals forces to give it a higher boiling point there. All right. And then as you can see here, um, as you go up uh, in size, again, the boiling point increases. And this is due to increased levels of dispersion forces, which increases the sum of van der Waals forces for those things. So very long things will have a much higher boiling point than very short things. And it'll be because of dispersion forces, not the hydrogen bonding. If you think about it, it's like this. Here is the sum of van der Waals forces, and each of it is sometimes done by a bit of dispersion, a bit of dipole-dipole, 
and bit of hydrogen bonding. Okay, it's the sum of Van der Waals forces that makes the difference. All right, as you go up, uh, as you go up, the um, uh, the size, the sum of Van der Waals forces will increase because it will all be that extra dispersion force there. All right. Okay, let's. Move. Uh, now, soluble in water, the hydrogen bonding in the molecule means that alcohols are soluble in water. Solubility is the ability to form bonds of similar or greater strength. So this is really important vocabulary between the solvent and solute compared to the solvent solvent and the solute solute bonds. Okay, the hydrogen bonding between water and the alcohol group means that the small alcohols are completely soluble in water. Um, but however, the larger the alcohol, the greater the effect the hydrocarbon end on the alcohol has on the solubility and then the lower the solubility of water. So let's have a look at this one here. Let's just say it's butanol. Okay, um, this butanol can hydrogen bond with some water. All right, so some water here and you can have hydrogen bonding in between them. Okay, that's fine. But remember, this is the hydrocarbon end. Okay, and this hydrocarbon end cannot hydrogen bond to water so there's nothing there and so it's sad all right so that hydrocarbon end uh can't hydrogen bond with the water and therefore that will reduce its solubility if that si uh, if that section gets larger and larger okay um yes these hydrocarbons can't form strong bonds with the water and thus the solu solvent solute bonds don't produce enough energy to break the solute solute bond solvent solvent bonds all right so here's an example of that, or here's the data. As you go up and the length of that chain increases, you become less and less soluble in water, All right? And so at some point, that even becomes insoluble in water, and that's decanol, which is like 10, which is not even that big, all right? So only the smaller alcohols are soluble in water, but as you get larger, because of the dispersion forces, because of that hydrocarbon tail, you become less soluble in water, all right? Alcohols generally have a high vapor pressure due to the relatively low sum of intermolecular forces. What the hell is vapor pressure? If you don't remember, it's this. Vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by vapor particles in a closed container of a substance. It is a proportional relationship with the rate of evaporation and an inversely proportional relationship with the sum of intermolecular forces. So here is my container. I have a lid on it. Okay, here are some liquid particles and those liquid particles evaporate and because it's in a closed container they can't get away all right so however much evaporates will ink uh, will make the vapor pressure okay so if a lot evaporates then you're going to have a high vapor pressure if very little evaporates then you're going to have a low vapor pressure and so what would affect the rate of evaporation it's that sum of in uh, sum of intermolecular forces or the van der waals forces Right. So if you have a high amount of intermolecular forces, they are not going to evaporate and they and leave the substance, and they therefore are not going to form that many vapor particles. All right. So let's have a look at this. Okay. So here we have uh, vapor pressure. So as you can see, as you go up in size, all right, the vapor pressure goes down. Vapor pressure goes down. All right. So. Uh, this increase in size is are going to affect the amount of dispersion forces and therefore the dispersion forces are going to hold it together and not allow it to evaporate over here we see that um, at different temperatures you can see the methanol the ethanol um, as you go up in size size increase as you go up in size the vapor pressure decreases Okay, and that's what we already said before. And then as you go up in temperature, the vapor pressure increases. Why would the vapor pressure increase? Because, well, it's hotter, more things are going to evaporate, and that's what happens when you heat stuff up. Okay, that's it for alcohols. Uh, we'll see you next for the next video.